um, took me to a canteen, got me some food, whatever I wanted to eat. I was like, oh, this is good treatment. And then I had my interview. After finishing my interview, I called my mom. I was like, ha, ah, this is what I'm getting. And then a few days later, that was when my destiny changed. That was the beginning of my destiny changing. It changed my destiny. And I remember the first day when I went to university for my enrollment. And we were told to go through the registration line, queue and everything. And I showed them the letter which I had received from Helena Kennedy Foundation. And immediately I showed them, they just stamped, boom, finance checked. I don't even know how it feels to pay for fees in the UK for an undergraduate degree. I studied there. Instead of me paying £8,700 a year, I got that waived off from off me, my bill, for three years. I was given £1,000 every year for transport, travel expenses, which was even less than that, but I was given £1,000. And then I was also given uh, books as well, books, vouchers, and everything. Why did I share this testimony? Sometimes we may be in a place where things don't seem possible. But when you depend on God, when you say it even with your tongue that this is what I want to achieve, God makes a way. I studied in the UK on a full scholarship and I became the first woman in my entire family, the whole generation, to attain a degree from a UK university. And it's an achievement which I can't just throw away and not share with you guys that I graduated with a full scholarship and I got a 2-1. I did social work and you know there's lots of placements involved, which is quite hectic, but I did well considering the fact that I had two children and then my son Donnell had even joined us during that same period and I had three children. This is a testimony I wanted to share with you. But in my part two, I will be sharing with you how I was homeless and how God changed my life from paperless to paper in my next video. Before my dad died, I had a dream that um, I, he never attended my graduation. I remember calling my mom in 2012, crying because I woke up in tears. Like, what's what's going on? Why would I dream this dream? My dad was fine. Then. Like, oh, let's have a feel. Daddy is fine. But it's like God was preparing me for this to happen. And then my dad died in Chicago, Illinois, 
on the 16th of January 2013. So it was a tough year for me 2013. That was a year I realized that prayer is what we need in life because even though I've got a scholarship, huh, I still face challenges in order for me to finish to graduate my 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 degree. I faced a lot of challenges, you know, losing my dad. Um, we had issues with housing because I didn't have um, my leave to remain in the UK. So n nobody will help you. That's how it is. Even though you have children that are born here, the system here doesn't even care about you. They don't care about you. I remember always complaining on Facebook, like, I just want to come back home. I just want to be in Zambia. My dad always used to say, when you graduate, come back home, you will do better. I was like, yes. Make sure you also get a master's. I said, yes. And I told my dad, once I get my master's, I will move home. So once you see me graduating with a master's, just know it's time. Um, so um, I remember um, just asking myself questions like, why am I here? You know, and then I look at the kids. They go to school here. By the way, education in the UK is free of charge. As long as the children are here in this country, every child goes to school free of charge no child pays school and if your child doesn't go to school you as a parent you'll be in trouble i mean with the law you will go to prison for it uh lateness non-attendance it's a big problem here in the uk they've made every school free like government schools are free there's private schools but government schools are there they call them state schools so then I was thinking to myself, if I go with these children, well, remember my dad has died. If I go with these children to Zambia, who's going to help me? My dad is no more. Okay, my mom is there. My sister is there. But you know how it is. You don't have your degree. Okay, who's going to give me a job? You know, I, I kept on thinking, like, okay, let me just try to be strong. I remember approaching this um, Asian man. I won't mention his name, but he's a popular figure. He's a doctor. I went to him. I was like, Asa, help me. He was like, no. Go back to Zambia. Go back to Zambia and start your life there. You'll be better off there. I was like, no. My children were born here. My children must get what they were born here for. I mean, they should get their British passports. Why should I take them back to Zambia? Not even back to Zambia. They were not even born there. They don't even know how Zambia looks like. And the man was just like, oh, it's up to you. Me, I'm, I'm not willing to help you. And then by that time, um, the, the, the father had decided to leave me because of his own reasons. You know, there is this issue in this Western world. For those of you who live here, some of you people, you talk too much, you insult me. Hey, that's why you don't have a man. Let me tell you how it is. If you don't have documents as a woman here in the diaspora, you are not on anyone's market. That's how it is. Unless you meet a man who truly loves you or somebody you grew up with from home in Africa or anything. But if you meet all these especially these men from these other countries ah uh, they came on a mission to collect paper to make money to work then they should meet you you have no papers sorry my sister you are not even on their list to marry i had no papers and by then remember i had applied in 2009 and it was slow back and forth no this oh you don't qualify because your children are still young that's what i used to face oh your children can cope that's what they used to always write. Your children can cope anywhere in the world because they are young. That's what they, they would always write. But I would still put in an application. They deny me, I put in again an application. And, and my lawyer was like, why do you keep on putting these applications? Like, as long as I put in an application, I've bought time. And at least I'm not illegal. At least I'm showing that I, I want to stay here legally. But I kept on doing that. And I wasted so much money, believe you me. Some lawyers are wicked. Oh. <laughs> They'll collect one five, one thousand five hundred pounds. This one will collect so much. And they even know that your application is not going anywhere. But for me, it was just like, I, I will not give up. I kept on putting and they send it back. I'm putting and they send it back. So 2013, there's no hope. There's no hope for me. You know, and my last letter that I ever received from them was, you know, you can go back to Zambia and start a life. <laughs> 
in Zambia. I said, these people, why? Why are you people giving me trouble like this? Uh, but God came through. Uh, we serve a mighty God. I remember going for prayers to the church in London. And we would always pray, always pray. And the pastor would say, as long as you're in this land, uh, God has allowed you to step on this land of UK. You will get paper of UK. Come and see prayer. Guys, you don't know how to pray. We pray in the UK for paper. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> we pray for these papers. Ah, we were praying for these papers like something else. And uh, I remember um, getting a job. Um, a company, an NGO, like called me for a job, and um, I started working for the council local authorities, it's like an agency that called me, yeah, then I started working for the local authority in Lincoln, but before then, uh, after this man left, I was left with a house, a big house, the rent was like 800 pounds, and I was expected to be paying 800 pounds me, I only work in Max and Spencer shop, 800 pounds is too much for me, rentals down south, by the way, is very expensive, where I live, same house, this one is even bigger, this one is bigger, I pay 475 pounds rent for a three bedroom house. And in Reading, same house, smaller than this, a thousand pounds. In London, this is 1,500 pounds. For those of you who want to know the calculations of pounds, do it times 18 kwacha or times 19 kwacha or wherever you are if you're in Nigeria times 470 naira. Yeah, or if you're in Namibia, it's times 18. If you're in Southern Africa, mainly it's times 18 times 18, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I was like, I can't afford this. So I gave up the house and I started living with a family friend of mine. My dad uh, and his dad were very good friends. We grew up together you now, these childhood friends. And um, I stayed there for six weeks and then I got a job. But before then, I would sit in the car because then my children were still going to school in an area called Reading and his house was in London. So I would bring them to Reading and remember the cost of fuel, one hour, 27 minutes drive. Hmm? Uh, and I would sit in the car the whole day and I would ask myself, I have a degree and I'm sat in this car. What am I doing? And I said, people can be wicked. People can be wicked. Why? Because this person wants to punish you so that you should suffer. So that, you know, you should just say, take the children, I give up, I'm not, I said, me, my children, I will look after them, homeless or not homeless. I looked after my children. And I remember when a phone call came and I received that phone call and, you know, I was given that job in Lincoln and then I asked another lady in Nottingham to offer me accommodation. That girl, that girl, I always say, God bless you. Sandra, amazing girl. She was raised very well. This girl would respect me. She, would, she offered me her place. Even though I, I was sleeping on the floor with the children, for me, it didn't matter. For me, it was like, I need a place to stay for me to find my feet. Because at least I've got a job that is paying me good money, 650 pounds a week. That's a lot of money. So that was 2014, 2015, I got my own place. 2014, I got my own place. So I was staying in my own place after I stayed with her six weeks. And then when I was staying with her for six weeks, <laughs> one day I go to work. <laughs> Life. I go to work one day and then I'm told, um, Lily, this, Lillian, by the way, Lillian at work, Lillian, Lily's for you. <laughs> Lillian. Uh, we don't seem to have your documents to work. I'm like, no, I have given my right to work. This is my right to work because I was always given. I always applied for permission to work. I was like, look, I have children. You, I can't be waiting for all these years for my paper. At least give me permission to work. So I always used to have permission to work. And because I've always had my national insurance number, which is what I, the number you use to pay your tax. So I was like, ah, yes, give me my work permit. So I always used to get my work um, permit. And this manager just told me she wasn't going to help me in any way um, because I have to tell home office to write to them. I contacted home office immigration and immigration sent them a fax. Home office headline, everything. And the woman didn't. Just said no. But the fax is from home office and they are confirming that I'm allowed to work. 
Oh, but on the shortage occupation list says children, not adults. You are working with adults. Oh, devil, you try. <laughs> devil, you can try. I remember calling my friend Tyrone. He's such a close friend of mine in Cardiff. I called him and all I did was cry. The whole way. Tyrone, I'm getting 650. Tyrone, I have just started my life. And these people decide to just chase me. I didn't do anything wrong. They stood on the fact that my documents. Immigration has even faxed them, Tyrone. What? He said, ah, boy. I said, boy. That's not what I want to hear. I've got a budget for that 650 a week. So when I got home, I picked up the kids from the after school club and they were shocked. Mommy, you're not going to work today. I said, no. And I went to social services and I said, look, this is a situation. What am I going to do? And then they found out that the only people who could help me was immigration because at the time I was still waiting. So they have to take responsibility. And the only way they could take responsibility is by me moving into the accommodation. So I... I, they, I don't know who they rang and then I also went to Citizen, uh, Citizen Advice Bureau because we have a, a, a center here called the Citizen Advice Bureau that give you advice on everything about the UK, anything about the UK, if you are in debt, anything, if you are homeless, anything. So I went to Citizen Advice Bureau and um, I just told them what I was going through and they're like, okay, if we get, you get any more information maybe we can help you because at this time we don't even know how we can help you and then an immigration boss called me i've heard you're homeless <laughs> like obviously i'm going to be homeless because where i was staying in the house i needed to be paying rent and that at least it was about 500 pounds but how was i going to be paying because i used to pay every like um weekly i used to pay something so now how was i going to be paying my rent and she told me, if you put in an application, I will approve it. So that's when, you know, I put in an application and then it was approved. And then I went to stay in Birmingham for six weeks. But then I lost weight. I was just throwing up. Uh, unfortunately for me, at that time, I was even pregnant. Hey, life just, it battered me. It battered me. I have a story on that one, uh, which I, I think I've titled Single... Yeah, single parents, I mean, and I, I have to remember, but I'll, I'll link it. I, I state everything because I, I don't like to go back. You have to watch my video mm. to understand my life history because this is a different video altogether. So after Birmingham, um, we went to court to, you know, finalize accommodation and the judge told immigration, said, look, you have delayed her case. You will grant Miss Motambo her leave. You will accommodate Miss Motambo until you grant her her leave to remain in the UK because you've delayed her case. And by then, my children were already even above, I think, seven. One of them was above seven. So I now qualified. According to their rules, your child has to be seven. That's why they weren't giving me because my children were below seven. So one of them turned seven. So because one of them turned seven, I now qualified. So from then, we moved back up here to Stockton and Tees where I live. And within a short time, my papers were granted. Have you ever seen a woman dancing pregnant uh, to Ephraim's song, This Kind of God? That was me. And at that time, um, we, I had been told to do a DNA test for my son, which was going to cost 600 pounds because he was born in Zambia. So they wanted to prove that he was my son. And then social services here decided to help me. So they funded it. And... That day I was so happy, I said, God, you're too much. I never paid a penny and everything was granted. So why did I tell you this testimony? I was homeless. I was paperless. I was dumped. I was ridiculed because I had nothing to offer. But God came through. But God showed himself strong that as long as you hold on, he will grant you what you desire two years ago 2018 i celebrated my daughter's british citizenship this year i'm celebrating another child of mine's 
British citizenship. Then me too as well. I will tell you a testimony of how I got the new, because the time when I got the documents in 2016, it was something different called family life. But this year in 2020, God has done it again. So that's going to be a separate testimony altogether of what I got in order for me to qualify for my British passport next year. That's the God we serve. What are you going through in your life? What situation are you going through in your life? Are you giving up on anything that you, you just see that, you know, things are not working for you? Look at my life. I was homeless. <laughs> I had no job. I had, I even deny work now. <laughs> I had no opportunities in life. I had no qualification. I had no degree. I had nothing. But today, I can say I have a degree and a master's. I can say I have a house. I can say I have a job. I can say I have a salary. I can say I have a company. I can say I have investments. Simply because I depended on God. I remember when they sent me a letter telling me that, you know, I've lost my job and everything and there was other money that I was expecting to be receiving and they said I can't receive that money because I don't have my leave to remain in the UK. I took the letters and I dumped them on the bed. I said, God, over to you. What do you expect me to do? <laughs> over to you. I have done my best. Now I leave this butter to you. And he made a way where there is no way. That's the God who said. So in my part three, I will be explaining to you on what God has done for my life. But let it be in my hands first and then I will show you. Be faithful to God. Uh, when you're faithful, when you pray to God, when you, you don't, don't pray to God because you're expecting something. Pray to God because he is your maker. He is your savior. He is your ruler. He is a prince of peace. He is a king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, of your life. He's the one who created you. So that's the reason why you're worshiping him. Not because you want to drive. <laughs> Let's talk about Range Rover. I gotta drive a Range Rover, definitely. <laughs> um, not because you want a Range Rover, no. But because you acknowledge him as the ruler of your life as long as you put god first and you allow him to take over the situation he makes a way that's where god wants to come in and help you because god wants to he doesn't want to share his glory with anybody he wants you to shine without any other person say if not for me that person wouldn't be where he or she is no 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 and I forgot to tell you that for my scholarship, when I got my scholarship, I even went to the House of Lords in the UK. I mean, see how God just made me shine. I even went to the House of Lords to receive my scholarship. House of Lords, guys. Parliament of UK, House of Lords, and I received my award. That is the God we serve. God is so awesome. And... Because I never gave up, I've never given up. He has always come through for my life. See you in my next video.